So I just like to give a warning, do not buy the X6 and especially today I wanted to take a look at another interesting and largely undocumented retro handheld. We have the X6. So the X6 I've seen a few other reviews for online but not too many people are talking about it so I just wanted to come in here and give my two cents on it. So you can find this online for a few different prices. I was able to get it on sale for a little bit under $20. But I've seen other points where this thing is $40, so I wanted to take a look at it and give my views on it because this thing to me is a little weird because taking a look at it just from the start, it actually looks kind of nice. And some aspects of it actually feel pretty nice as well. The build is actually pretty decent for such a cheap budget device. It's not super light, it doesn't rattle a ton when you shake it. And as you can see, there's some more premium looking features on it. And this is why I'm a little bit interested and concerned about this device. And I'll get more into that later. You can see it's pretty large, much larger than the device like the Ambernic RG35XX, which isn't saying that it's more premium just because it's bigger, but it's an interesting feature to say the least for such a cheap device. And I think most prominently you have two analog sticks on this, which is not normal for such a cheap handheld. And then other than that, you have pretty standard features. You have the D-pad, A, B, X, Y buttons, which are these plastic colorful buttons, which are okay, not my favorite, it, but they're fine I don't really care that much and I think most people don't care too much about that either of course start menu and select and then turning it over to the side you have a power on and reset button and then plus and minus volume buttons and then taking it over to the back you have R and L triggers and these are very very loud and the same goes for the other buttons as well the d-pad isn't as loud as some other reviews have said it is but it is pretty loud and sometimes you can press them and it doesn't even register as being pressed because you didn't push it hard enough in certainly that's something you can adjust to and just push it a little harder but it can be a little annoying at times and the same with the D-pad, the D-pad isn't great, it's not absolutely awful, it's not a deal breaker, but I would want something a little better than this, honestly. In many other budget devices, you get a better D-pad, but it's certainly playable. I would say if you were going to play a fighting game on it, for example, you might have some issues. But for most games, I'd say it's fine. And then taking a look at the analog sticks. I actually kind of like the analog sticks, honestly. They're not amazing, they're not perfect. But they're pretty good and I wouldn't expect anything too much better than this for a budget device. And then with the A, B, X, Y buttons, just about what I'd expect, nothing too much to say there. So once you power it on and get past the welcome screen, you're greeted with a very interesting looking menu. So after I take a look at the games and show you the emulation, I'm going to show you guys some of these other options here because they're a little bit bizarre in all honesty. But yeah, here's a little preview of them. Uh, you have games, music, pictures, videos, ebooks, browser, tool, and settings. So once you click on games, you're going to be greeted with this menu here. On the left, you have all the systems that you can emulate. So then you go to the right to see the games themselves. You can look through all your ROMs. So here's me going down the list. It actually extends down a little bit once you get to the bottom. Uh, as you can see, it's already organized in a very strange way. And you can also see weird things like the icons being a little messed up. Like if you look at the NES icon, it's not anything that has to do with an NES. Once you actually start playing the games, you'll see that they're okay for some of them, right? Like you look at NES, most SNES games, and Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, for example, and others. I'm not going to go over absolutely everything. You'll find games that do work well. Most of them will. For these lower end systems that are generally really easy to emulate, you're not going to find too many problems. I'm not going to say everything is horrible with this because, yeah, it works fine. I would say that there's room for improvement. There is pretty frequent screen tearing, which to me isn't the end of the world. I know for some people, People, they'll see just minor screen tearing and they say okay it's absolutely unplayable I can't play this it's horrible it's certainly a little bit annoying but I think for most people especially if you're fine buying such a cheap device you won't care that much and it's not on every game certainly some games will be worse than others certain systems will be worse than others but that is there and it is something to be aware of but when you get into some other systems you'll find that some games just aren't performing very well and they're not in a condition that I would really want to play them in honestly and you could look at other budget handhelds like the Datafrog SF2000 which I previously reviewed in an old video 
and that thing can handle Mega Drive much better than this, and that's about $20 or even a little bit less. And if you pay $40 for this, not on sale, I would just say, wow, completely blows it out of the water and for half the price, if that's the case. So yeah, it's not super promising. It is a little bit disappointing, I'll be honest. And other games just have strange graphical glitches in them that you can see here. But it does do some things right. If you look in the settings for each game, you have the ability to remap your controls, which is helpful and something that a lot of other cheap devices do not have so I really appreciated that here you have support for multiple save states which seem to work well for me but before I wrap up I said I'd take a look at the menu because there is some very strange stuff on here so when you look at the menu you see game which is the games that I just showed you music pictures videos ebook browser so we have Internet Explorer on here I guess uh, tool and setting and some of these are actually in the singular like I said game ebook browser tool and setting uh, you know which I didn't even notice until now but so taking a look at the music tab it comes preloaded with a few songs for some reason and there is this one uh, really old school no copyright sound song that's found in a ton of tutorials that I'm sure most of you have heard at one point or another the speaker on here actually is pretty good I would say it's better than most budget devices I've tried I kind of like it actually it's not perfect there's certainly better speakers on these handheld devices and then taking a look at the pictures uh, I'm not really sure what these are all for maybe they're different wallpaper options. You have a cute puppy over here. <laughs> uh, so maybe that makes it worth it for you. You have videos, which for some reason it includes that scene from Ice Age where that animal, I forget what his name is. I haven't seen that movie in so long. It's chasing the acorn. And I think it's kind of a famous scene from years and years ago. I remember that being a big deal. That's on there for some reason. You have an ebook section, which has, from what I can tell, a, I think, Chinese joke book. I'll put a translation on screen. I remember earlier, I actually translated one of the jokes. It was like, I think this is a joke. I'm not 100% sure. It doesn't really make too much sense in English. But uh, Okay, so that was there. And you have your Internet Explorer, right? Your browser. But actually taking a look at it, you have just a file browser. And then Tool, which just contains a recorder, which is a working voice recorder. <laughs> It's not good. It's very, very muffled. I think the microphone is buried somewhere internally, or at least I haven't seen it on the outside of the X6. But it actually does work, and you can play back your sounds. Hello, guys. Welcome back. This is the test. Let's hear it. And then you have stopwatch, calculator, and calendar. And then taking a look at the settings, you have display, which is just going to be your backlight settings, your brightness, power savings, which is, I think, just when the screen turns off, language, and there's a lot of languages on here, TV out, which you will use with the cable that came with this. I have not tried it yet, so I'm not going to make any claims to whether it works or not. And then advanced. So in advanced, you have information, which is your firmware version, free space on your card, information like that. And then the key tone, which probably I should just turn off immediately effect setting not really sure what this is and format card which I think is a little scary to have this in here I've not attempted to do anything with this yet I don't know if I just press a here it's going to automatically format my micro SD card and then everything goes black I don't know what happens I'm not even going to touch this with a 10 foot pole I know I'm not going to be playing this too much in the future but I don't want to render this thing useless. I know this is a common problem. You see in YouTube comment sections sometimes people saying, oh, do you have the firmware for this? I accidentally formatted my micro SD card. Uh, and this is an easy way to do that. If it's just you press A and it formats. I don't know if that's what it is. Uh, maybe it's an English mistake. I don't know if you're going to press A, click on this, and it's going to go black. Everything's going to be gone. I did see in a YouTube comment section someone mentioning on another review for this that they accidentally formatted their micro SD card. Uh, I don't know if it was through this or what, but I'm not even going to go anywhere near this. I think it's kind of dangerous to have this, uh, especially if you're giving this to kids. But there is something to me that is a little more annoying than just the icon being messed up or the games being organized in a strange way. It's the fact that there is no search on here. I haven't found any search option for the ROMs. There is nothing in the instruction manual I got about it. I've tried a few different things. I didn't see it anywhere. So to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, there is no search here. I haven't found it, which is one thing. It's pretty annoying, but if the games were in alphabetical order, that would be okay, I guess. It'd still be annoying because there's a ton of games for some of these systems, and it would take you a minute or so to find whichever game you want. 
that's one thing, but a lot of these are not in alphabetical order, okay? Sometimes it's in this strange way where there's some that are numerically ordered that are completely incoherent. There's no rhyme or reason to them being organized in the way that they are just by like one, two, three, four, five, six, not alphabetically, but just by these numbers, which is just like, okay, whatever. I've seen it in other systems before. It's not exclusive to this. But yeah, that's there. And then sometimes in the middle of the list, it switches over to repeated games and then goes to alphabetical order. So with these systems not being in perfect alphabetical order, and they do differ, some are better than others in finding games, finding the specific game that you wanna play can be really annoying here. And I haven't attempted to do it, but if you just wanted to play a select few games, you could go in there and delete the ROMs and just leave the ones that you want in there or bring your own games in. If you wanted to do that, you could, but I think most people probably aren't gonna be wanting to do all all of that for such a cheap device, but maybe some people would, and there's workarounds, like I said, with that. But for now, it's a little bit annoying that there is no search feature and the games aren't in alphabetical order, but I digress, let's continue. At the very least, do not buy it for $40, okay? If you find this on sale for like $17, which I think I bought it for, I would even say I don't recommend it for that. Uh, honestly, I don't find it very good. It can do some things good, right? Like it can play NES games, for example, fine. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy. Yeah, it works fine. Some arcade games are okay. So there's some games that this thing does play well. I'm not saying that it can do nothing well, but the thing is for what it can do well, other systems, other handhelds can do it just as good or better for less money. I bought this on Timu, and if you're a new user to Timu, you can get 50% off your first order. So you can get like the Miu Mini or sometimes the Ambernick RG35XXs in stock on Timu. So you can get those for 50% off, which is gonna be under $40. And yeah, that's much, much better than the X6. So the way you get that deal is, I'm gonna put the information down below. You just need to download Timu through the link in the description and then buy the retro handheld you want and then use the 50% off code which I'll link down below in the description as well. So I just want to always throw that in there because it's such a fantastic deal and sometimes I throw affiliate links down there as well which help out the channel but if you're looking for a budget device that can really help you out and cut your costs down and I was really happy to find that deal when I first did so yeah I can understand how some people could be deceived by what looks like a more premium design. It's pretty big. It's different from most budget devices like this. It has two analog sticks which is kind of strange because the right analog stick really isn't going to be getting much use in these older games so it does make it look more premium and honestly the design the build quality is more premium than similar cheap devices I kind of like it it doesn't rattle too much the speaker is actually pretty good so yeah it's a little bit deceptive in that area honestly so I don't want anyone to buy this thinking they're getting something that's actually gonna really be worth their money only to find out wait I could have just bought the data frog SF 2000 for $20 or less than that even in some cases and got something better than this don't buy it unless you really want it for whatever reason you want something bigger you just want to play NES games on it or SNES games or something like that that's lower end and easier to run you don't care about playing Mega Drive for example but that just to say I think there's many other options out there that are much better than this for a much better price so if you enjoyed this video I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe I'll see you in the next video have a great rest of your day bye bye